Living here in BC, we've always heard how vulnerable we are to earthquakes. Not a matter of if, but when. Now, we can't predict earthquakes, but we can detect them sooner thanks to the earthquake early warning system. When BC South Coast shook with a 4.7 magnitude earthquake in February, you may or may not have gotten an alert, or maybe it came later, and there were lots of questions about it. Here are some of the key things that you should know about the alert system. First, how does it even work? Well, Natural Resources Canada says there are sensors that detect the first energy from an earthquake. It's called a P wave, which rarely causes damage. The sensors send this information to data centers where a computer calculates things like the earthquake's location and magnitude. That gives a warning before the stronger shaking starts. And should everyone expect an alert? Not necessarily. It doesn't send to everyone. It sends only to the people where there might be strong shaking. The quake has to be a magnitude greater than 5.0. And it has to have an intensity of 4 or higher on the modified Mercalli intensity scale. That's also why an alert wasn't sent out on March 3rd, when another earthquake struck near Sydney. The scale describes that as many feeling the quake indoors, dishes rattling, walls making creaking noises, kind of like a heavy truck hitting a building. But after the earthquake on February 21st, there were still lots of lingering questions. Some people saying they got the alert, others said they didn't. We asked about that. Why is that? I mean, did the system fail that day? The system actually worked exactly as it was designed. Detected the earthquake, determined it was above thresholds. Natural Resources Canada says the EEW system sent a message to another system. This is the National Public Alerting System and indicated where to send the warning for the public. Then, this system sent messages to broadcast media and cell providers to fire off all these alerts. The agency says it's not an error in the system if you felt the earthquake and didn't receive an alert. It may simply mean that you are not in a zone of serious danger. And there might be other reasons why you don't get the alert. For example, you might be in a location where it's hard to get signal, like an underground garage, or your phone might only be set to Wi-Fi only. But Natural Resources Canada also acknowledged that after this earthquake, it received reports that some people who got the alert were outside the immediate risk area, some intended recipients didn't get it, or that some alerts may have been received after a short delay. In a statement, the agency writes that such issues have been reported after other activations on NPAS in the past, and they are inherent in the nature of the system, and that there will be a review to take the lessons and track reports for the future. There is some con inconsistency in how cell alerting um, happens, and we are in discussions with cell providers about this to, so that this can be improved in the future. And just to really make sure that your device can get an alert, here's what else you can do. Visit Alert Ready or contact your wireless service provider. It tells you if your device is compatible with the alert. Generally, your phone needs to be able to connect to LTE. Make sure your phone is updated with its latest operating software. And again, your phone has to have LTE connection during the emergency to get an alert. And when it comes to the technology, one expert says it can really allow critical infrastructure to take immediate action, such as halting traffic from driving onto bridges or into tunnels. But we are not real time yet. But I think technology as of now, 2025, uh, it should be readily available and uh, we should not have such a discrepancy between different users. He says overall, the tech is still improving and it's yet again another reminder to be proactive and be earthquake ready. Vineet Brach, CBC News, Vancouver.